The film opens with a man nervously attempting to record himself. He first announces himself as Stephen Arthur Younger, an American citizen, and states his demands. However, he redoes the recording and presents his new name, Yusuf Adam Muhammad. The scene shifts to Tuesday at the FBI Los Angeles Field Office's counterterrorism branch, when a team lead by Agent Helen Brody discusses the continuous surveillance of some people on their watch list. Fortunately, nothing particularly unusual has come to their attention, but Helen appears agitated by the lack of surveillance results, believing that there must be a genuine threat for them to present in an impending review with FBI headquarters. Phillips, one of the team's operatives, informs Helen about an intriguing man named Henry Harold Humphreys who appears in the CIA files they obtained. The man's information is protected, but his wife is a Bosnian Muslim who allegedly participated in dubious actions during the Bosnian War. Though Helen appears to be rejecting some of Philip's comments, she ultimately commends his lead and encourages him to dig deeper. Meanwhile, in the Humphreys family, they appear to be any other normal couple, albeit more cautious and aware. Reina, Henry's wife tells her husband that she monitors everyone who comes near their house using security cameras. On their television, news reports Yusuf as a wanted man for his possible involvement in a shooting that occurred earlier that day. Back at the FBI, Agent Paul Vincent watches the same news story as Helen and the rest of her team. Yusuf allegedly killed a police officer and kidnapped two young children. Helen and the others were confused because the FBI had not previously been briefed about Yusuf, despite the fact that they had been monitoring him as a potential terrorist threat. Despite this, Agent DJ Jackson reminds Helen that Yusuf was never involved in anything before to this incident and had served in the Army, but his files are confidential. Helen's superior assistant director, Jack Saunders, approaches her and informs her that they need to bring every target on their watch list into the office for questioning. Helen says that there are too many targets, but Jack claims that they would recruit as many agents as possible to assist the team, and that the order comes from their superiors. Helen follows through on the request, ordering a pair of agents to bring Rena in because she has recently been added to their watch list. The agents go to the Humphreys' house when the family is playing, and Rena spots them on the security camera. She speaks to them over the intercom, but Henry quickly calls his contact at the Defense Intelligence Agency, Charles Thompson. Henry maintains that his and his family's identities and locations should have been kept hidden because they are under the CIA's protection, while Charles claims that there was a mix-up with the FBI. Helen receives a call from Charles on her personal line, informing her that Henry's file was submitted to the FBI by accident. He begs her to gather her agents because Henry is a dangerous man, but the agents do not return her calls. She directs DJ and Agent Vincent to investigate the problem at the Humphreys' house, where they are surprised to find the other agents tied up and gagged on chairs. After seeing the agents' badges, Henry walks out in peace and instructs his wife to drop her gun and stand back before agreeing to come to their office to be questioned. Henry nonchalantly refers to the FBI agents as idiots for clearly not knowing what they are doing, implying that Henry Humphreys is not even his real name. Then Jack and Charles enter the room to end the questioning, stating that Henry is under government protection and is being escorted away by Charles. The next day, Helen and her crew are summoned to relocate to a clandestine facility run undercover by the military. General Paulson, in charge of the facility, greets the team which is joined by Charles and Henry. Helen is astonished to find Henry there, and Henry reacts by joking that he works as an independent contractor for the government. Paulson leads them all to watch Yusef's videotape, in which he demonstrates that he has hidden three nuclear bombs in three major cities across the country. If his demands are not met by Friday, the bombs will explode. Some of them believe he is lying because developing a nuclear bomb is not an easy undertaking. However, Paulson reminds them that Yusef was a member of Delta IV, which specialized in field nuclear weapons, and had served in Iraq to search for nukes. They believe he obtained the nuclear materials from a Russian facility. Iran paid him to carry them, but Yusef stole both the money and the materials before disappearing. Yusef hasn't made any demands yet, but they apprehended him and are now ready to interrogate him about the bomb's position. They are all taken to see army personnel employing various torture methods, but to no avail. Henry, 
who is meant to be an interrogation specialist, claims that because Yusuf was in the military, the conventional procedures will not work. Despite Paulson's order that no one else interrogate Yusuf, Henry enters the chamber and begins hitting Yusuf's interrogator with a heavy item. He is hauled away by the other military people, but Helen seizes the opportunity to enter the chamber and question Yusuf. Despite her lovely words to him, Yusuf declines to respond, claiming that it is too soon before she is likewise removed from the chamber. Helen was working with her team when Henry summoned her to his room. He tells her that, as an ex-military interrogator, he believes that standard questioning techniques will not work on Yusuf because he was trained to withstand them as a soldier. While he is reading Helen's personal file to her, Charles and Paulson enter to request Henry's assistance with the interrogation. He agrees to work only with his chosen assistant and another chosen interrogator who will take turns with him. Henry appears to have chosen Helen to be the other interrogator, which surprises her, and they all proceed to the interrogation chamber. Paulson is dissatisfied with Henry's requirements and denies that he is in command of this facility, but a high-ranking official arrives to prioritize Henry's requests because they need Yusuf to communicate. Everyone else leaves the room, including Paulson, who delegated authority to one of his subordinates. Henry instructs his selected aide, Alvarez, to bring his equipment inside the chamber, where Yusuf is tied up with his head covered. They bring him down and bind him to a chair. Henry asks Yusuf where the bombs are, but when he doesn't respond, he cuts off the tip of his finger with an axe. Everyone outside, including Helen, is surprised and outraged by Henry's manner. Helen and the military team bring Henry outside and try to stop him. However, the previous senior official allows Henry's interrogation method in order to find the bombs as soon as possible. To everyone's dismay, Henry resumes his torment. Even Paulson cannot stop him now. Helen confronts Charles, claiming that torturing Yusef in this manner is illegal. He responds that it is permissible because Yusef's nationality has been revoked by the government, and he poses a threat to national security. She walks out of the room to confront Jack about Henry's unconstitutional torture, but Jack responds that if the explosives are detonated, there will be no constitution left. Helen returns to the interrogation chamber, but she appears unable to tolerate the continued torture. She is trying to regain her composure in the bathroom when Henry enters to relieve himself. She expresses her unhappiness with his tactics once more, but Henry invites her to work with him again. She will be the decent officer who asks Yusef vital questions after Henry has tortured him. Helen grudgingly agrees, taking her turn to allow Yusef to rest for a bit. When she warns him that Henry will continue tormenting him, he appears to accept his fate, as if he had anticipated the agony. Even when she tries to use his children's safety against him, he declares they only have two days to meet his demands. Helen asks him to hand over one of the bombs so they'll take him seriously, but Yusuf insists they'll listen to him the following day. As he refuses to say what would happen the following day, Henry enters, eager to resume his torture. Yusuf is tortured day and night and not permitted to sleep at all. On Thursday, Henry begins electro-shocking a bleeding and injured Yusuf. When Rena comes to visit Henry, he asks Helen to look after Yusuf while he spends time with his wife. Unfortunately, the mechanism that delivered the electric shocks failed when they attempted to awake Yusuf. They managed to turn it off just before it kills him. Henry later admits to Helen that he purposefully malfunctioned the equipment to give Yusuf false hope. Meanwhile, the FBI is investigating Yusuf's family's movements as well as the locations of the bomb. They get a lead from a witness who observed Yusuf rent a two-ton truck from Jersey and never returned it. They assume that one bomb is near Los Angeles, another near New York City, and a third somewhere in the center. Henry summons Helen to the interrogation room to ask Yusuf what would happen that day, as it is already Thursday. Yusuf still refuses to speak, and Henry wants Helen to massage Yusuf's tight neck so he can't hide the agony from the torture. While she does so, Henry plays a song and begins relating the story of how he met his wife during the Bosnian War. He also discusses his children's births and how he believes Yusuf is a horrible father. This drives him to break down, eventually agreeing to discuss his demands. 
he informs the President of the United States that he wishes the President to make a public statement that the U.S. government will no longer financially or militarily back puppet governments and dictatorships in Islamic countries. He also wants the military to withdraw all U.S. troops from certain countries. Everyone agreed that Yousef's demands would never be granted, especially since negotiating with terrorists is against policy. But Henry argues that they should satisfy Yousef's demands because he merely wants an announcement rather than any concrete action. The pressure is on now that there are only 24 hours until the detonation. Henry is ordered to continue his torture, while Helen attempts to persuade Yousef to expose the bombs in exchange for allowing him to travel to Pakistan with his children. However, Henry claims that Yusuf does not want freedom, which Yusuf affirms by declaring that freedom is a false god. Yusuf insists that the bombs will go off if his conditions are not met. Meanwhile, the squad obtains the security footage from the mall where they apprehended Yusuf. He had been seen standing in the same position for about half an hour, as if he is waiting to be arrested. Paulson implies that the bombs are not genuine, so Helen returns to the chamber to question Yusuf about it. He eventually breaks down and admits that the bombs were empty shells with no nuclear elements inside. He claims he can verify it and gives Helen an address, which is promptly visited by a special team to be probed. Helen and Vince join the squad, but she isn't completely convinced and believes they should be cautious because Yousef indicated something would happen today. The location matches the one in the video, and they discover evidence on the roof, an image of Yousef on an electrical switch. When a soldier pulls it, it causes a massive C4 explosion in a nearby mall, which can be seen from the roof. Helen returns to Yusuf in wrath about all the lives lost. She demands that he reveals the bomb's true location, but Yusuf remains unconcerned. He claims that the U.S. military murders as many people in Islamic countries each day. They will continue their investigation until Friday, when the devices are scheduled to detonate at noon. The crew discovers a parking ticket for Yousef in Dallas, allowing them to connect the address to a warehouse where one of the bombs is stored. It is a real nuclear weapon that is scheduled to detonate in three hours. Knowing the remaining time, Henry is defeated, believing that Yousef will not give in despite further torture, but he returns to the chamber nevertheless. Meanwhile, the FBI has located Yousef's wife, Jahan, who insists on seeing her children before telling them anything. Instead, Henry intends to use Jahan to break Yusuf, so they place her in the chamber to persuade him to reveal the locations. When it fails, Henry threatens to harm Jahan before slitting her throat in front of Yusuf, despite Helen and the military's objections. They still haven't found the other bombs, and Henry learns that government officials and their families are being evacuated to nuclear bunkers. Henry is determined to uncover the bombs and even Helen advises him to do whatever is necessary because they are running out of time. As a final resort, Henry intends to use Yusuf's children against him, despite his pledge to the team that he will not hurt them. After being threatened that his children will be hurt, Yusuf finally gives the locations of the bombs in Los Angeles, New York, and Dallas. Henry, on the other hand, continues to threaten the children, convinced that Yusuf has hidden a fourth explosive. Yusuf denies it while the others break into the room to rescue the children, but Henry claims that the three bombs do not contain as much nuclear material as Yusuf had stolen, implying that there must be a fourth bomb. Hearing his argument, the top official in charge requests that the children be brought back into the chamber, and indicates that Henry is free to do anything he wants to them in order to provide additional information. Henry asks Helen to bring in the children so that he can have moral support for the scheme. Helen, however, fiercely opposes this plan, prompting Henry to free Yusuf from his constraints. The top official points his gun at Henry, compelling him to hurt the children as ordered, until Yusuf takes it. Yusuf urges Helen to look after his children before killing himself. Following the incident, Helen walks out of the facility with Yusuf's children. They locate and disable the bombs just in time. Unfortunately, Henry's instinct was correct, as a fourth explosive detonates without their awareness. Thanks for watching. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe for more of these recaps. Until next time, have a nice day.